Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry, and today I am going to explain the histogram. Before we get started, be sure and check out my podcast. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. It's called Photobomb. You will enjoy it, I promise. Just give it a listen. Also, join my group on Facebook called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And be sure and follow me on Instagram, at Boo Ray Perry on Instagram. I post a lot of fun stuff there. Also, don't forget that down in the description, I post a link to all of my gear, both the stuff that I carry professionally with my uh, X-H2 and the stuff that I carry as a travel photographer with my family on vacations and stuff with my X-100V. So if you go there and you click one of those links and you go and you buy something, I get a couple of dollars that help me to keep this channel going. All right, so let's talk about the, inst uh, the uh, histogram. <laughs> Not the Instagram, the histogram today. Before I get into this, because I don't want this video to be too long, let me just tell you that I've already made a video about the histogram, and I'll put a link to it right up here. There it is. See it? Right up there. If you go find that video, that's a long, detailed video with pictures and examples where I go through the whole thing and I explain the histogram. I'll also put down in the description a link to that video. So what am I going to do here if I already made this long histogram video? Well, in this one, I'm just going to kind of synopse it for you. I'm going to break it down quick, short, and sweet because the truth is the histogram is a great tool and everyone who understands the histogram and uses the histogram they swear by it. But you actually could go your entire career as a photographer and never use the histogram or never even understand the histogram because the histogram is relatively new. It didn't exist before digital photography. Back in the film days, they didn't have a histogram to look at when they were taking pictures. So it's new and it's great. It's a wonderful tool. But if you're not using it, well, that's fine too. And to be honest, I didn't really completely understand the histogram. <laughs> Uh, for a while when I started out uh, as a working professional photographer, which is one of those things I was like, yeah, I'll get to that later. And then I never, I never really got around to get into it. So what is a histogram? Mm. A histogram is a chart. And you will see this in a couple of places. Uh, in your camera, you can go to a histogram view. Sometimes you can set up in your camera so that when you're seeing a picture, there'll be a little tiny histogram in the corner even. you know. Or you can look at the histogram big in your screen, or you can look at the histogram after you've taken the picture. It will show up in Photoshop and Capture One. There'll be a histogram there. And the purpose of the histogram is to show you the areas of your image that are dark and the areas that are light. Now, it's not there to show you what parts of the image are dark and light. It's really there to show you how much of your image is dark and how much of your image is light and how much is in between. Basically the whole range of dynamic range that your camera has. And if you don't know what dynamic range is, that was my last video, so go back and check that one out. So here's what the chart looks like. I'm gonna put one up here for you. It's kind of confusing trying to figure out what this means, but basically one end of the chart is pure white and the other end of the chart is pure black and then in between the two is everything in between white and black right everything between light and dark all the different various shades of brightness and what the histogram does is it shows you how much of each type of brightness is in your image so when you look at the lines on the histogram that go way up high it's telling you that this particular type of brightness be it completely white or be it completely black or be it somewhere in, in between it has a lot of this in your image right every time it sees a spot or a pixel or however it measures i honestly don't even know exactly how it measures but every pixel that it sees that is this particular brightness it makes the line a little bit taller until eventually you can look at your image you can see whatever the tallest line is your image is in in your image it's telling you that you have more in your image that is that brightness level than anything else in your image. So how does this help you? Well, probably the main way that it helps you is that you can instantly look at your histogram and you can tell if you've got blown out highlights, highlights or crushed blacks. And I talk about that in my last video, by the way, Donna Grange, go look at that video again. I'll put a link up here. Uh, so you can tell instantly, do I have too many areas of my image that are completely black or do I have too many areas of my image that are completely white? Because that peak will be at one end of the Instagram. Uh, the histogram. <laughs> you have to drink every time I call it an Instagram. Uh, I think I, by the way, in the other video I made about this, I think I made the same mistake and, this, and the same joke. So, you know, go look for that. So, 
So you can instantly tell, like my image is too dark, my image is too bright, just by looking at the histogram. And modern histograms are a little bit different because it used to be it just showed you dark and light. And now it still shows you dark and light, but it also shows you by color. So it breaks it down to red, green, blue. So not only does it say you have a lot of image, a lot of your image that is this brightness, it will also say a lot of this brightness is green, or a lot of this brightness is blue, or a lot, of, you know, right, so forth. And if it gets all three of them together, that's white. So trying to understand a histogram can be kind of tricky, right? But it, but it is a useful tool. I, I know people who consult their histogram before they ever take a picture because you can look at the histogram and you can see the peaks in the valleys and you want those peaks typically you want the peaks to be somewhere around the center right that's kind of where you want the peaks to be you want the majority of your image to have a brightness that's pretty much in the center you don't want your whole image to be white you don't want your whole image to be black you want it to be somewhere in the middle the goldilocks center right just right uh, and a lot of people really analyze their histogram, especially, uh, say, landscape photographers are trying to set up, take, take a picture of the landscape, a beautiful picture. They'll use their Instagram, their <laughs> they'll use their histogram to make sure that they are just right with their exposure. It really is a great way to pinpoint your exposure. However, if you don't use it, you're going to be just fine. You know, you've got a light meter in your camera and you've got all the other stuff in your camera that will help you make sure that you get a proper exposure. And if you're shooting in raw, you can always go in and change the exposure by a stop or two usually and save your highlights or save your blacks. So consulting your histogram before you take a picture is really, uh, it's a bonus. You know what I mean? It's a treat if you've got the kind of photography where you can take that kind of time to really, really dial down and make sure your exposure is dead right in camera. Fantastic. You know, have a great time with it. But if you're like me and you're running gun and you're shooting weddings and stuff like that, you're really not looking at your histogram very often. I might look at it sometimes when I'm doing post-processing, but more often than not, I just go by my eye because I know the people who are looking at my pictures, they're going by their eye too, right? They're not looking at a histogram when they look at the pictures that I deliver to them. So I go by, does this look right? I go by that a lot. That's a lot of photographers are gonna tell me that's crazy. <laughs> but if you do this long enough, you develop a, a feel for it, for what the image should look like. So that is what a histogram is. Use it, love it, enjoy it, or kind of ignore it, you know, but it, it's a good idea to know what it is because you'll talk to other photographers or you'll read things online and they'll talk about the histogram or they'll show the histogram as an example of a certain picture or a certain camera's dynamic range. And if you don't understand what that is, you feel kind of lost and it makes you feel kind of stupid. And God knows we feel stupid enough, right? So this is a simple thing to not feel stupid about. That's what a histogram does. All right. Thanks for watching. Throw me a like, throw me a sub and come back for more because this thing's going to be going on pretty much forever.